Hi, this video deals with the beginning of everything we know, including our solar system and our planet. It provides a foundation to understand where everything began, and more importantly, it helps us to explain how everything came to be in and around us, also within and outside our planet, as it deals with the very formation of the materials that make up the Earth itself. Enjoy it, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. There is nothing better than a night out camping in the desert, outside of light pollution and beyond the trappings of our noisy modern life, where distractions are everywhere. Out here, the silence can be overwhelming so that there is no other option that contemplate in amazement the objects in the sky above us. No wonder why our ancestors were so good at observing the skies, it's just beautiful. Similarly, as we are amazed today as well as our ancestors, I can't stop thinking about one question probably they also had, that is, how everything began. How the configuration of the objects in the sky, and in a broader sense, the very existence of our Earth came to be. But more importantly, now I understand why the sky is an object of reverence or divinity, and why our ancestors dedicated so much to relate their existence on the planet's surface to what they see above in the stars and other celestial bodies. It's amazing that nowadays, even with our modern technology that allowed us to see farther away and at a better resolution like never before, we forget that we share the same composition of what we see in the skies. After all, we are all stardust. How and when did the universe and all the objects in the skies, including the galaxies and planets, came into existence? The fascination for the night sky and the understanding of the universe dates back far away into prehistory. The archaeological record is rich in examples of how different cultures studied the universe to the point that it drove different cultures and religions to reveal the celestial bodies and to the arising of the belief system in which the stars and their arrangements influence and govern our life. It is amazing how our ancestors knew so much about the skies and the celestial bodies, often with astonishing accuracy. The positions of the stars were recorded on a backdrop of seemingly fixed stars that acted as the coordinates of the celestial map upon which our ancestors plotted the planetary positions. However, questions about how and when the universe came into existence prevailed, and were locally answered alluding to mythology and astrological precepts. Okay, these are two questions. Number one, how? And number two, when? Well, we know a little bit more about the second one than about the first one. I mean, we do have a better idea about the when than the how. Modern science indicates that everything began between 10 and 20 billion years ago, in a small, tiny, minuscule point where all the matter was concentrated. That point blew up and that event is known as the Big Bang, and that is the beginning of the universe as conceived by the astrophysicist. From there, a wide variety of atoms of many different elements are available and free to bond with each other to form different compounds. The evolution of the universe is conceived today by astrophysicists as an expanding system of galaxies, stars, and planets. To understand how everything began, we must contemplate time spans and forces that are astonishingly short and unbelievably strong. Immediately following the Big Bang and during the earliest stage of our universe occurred almost at the very same time of the beginning of everything, the first eon of cosmic time, the Planckian, named after Max Planck, followed by the second eon of cosmic time, the Gamovian, named after George Gamow. We know quite a bit more about the second one, the Gamovian, because in the beginning during the Planckian, temperatures were too high for matter to be stable and everything happened very fast as it was a very unstable state that even astrophysicists do not know with certainty if the fundamental constants that work in our world like G and C even work during that short span of time. According to the astrophysicist, during the first part of the Gamovian, the four forces of nation were part of a single sort of super force. As the universe expanded from a tiny little dot into a small sphere, temperatures decreased and the universe continued continued expanding until its present radius of about 15 billion light years, according to what the astrophysicists call the inflation theory. As the universe expanded, temperatures decreased, thus allowing the transformation of energy into matter. At the end of this quite hectic period, the matter that survived all these transformations is the matter that forms all the objects that we see in the visible universe. It is thought that the first matter to stabilize were the quarks, which then became confined and formed protons, neutrons, and mesons. As the temperature kept dropping, this followed by the stabilization of hydrogen. As the temperature decreased to about 3000 degrees Kelvin, about 800,000 
years after the Big Bang, the energy was low enough for atoms to become stable. As the universe continued expanding, irregularities in the distribution of energy led to the formation of gravity centers that attracted mass leading to the formation of stars. As more and more stars formed, they grouped to form galaxies, and similarly, galaxies group to form galactic clusters. One of these is our galaxy, which contains not only our solar systems, but many more. Although this long journey led to the formation of more planetary systems, our planet is unique in that it is the place that we can have all in common, and for now, the only place where we can live. More importantly, it is the only one that we all call home, as life thrives in all its forms. But what makes our planet so special? Why if more galaxies contain so many planetary systems with planets that can potentially host life as we know it, why we still don't know about it? Good questions. We will talk more about them in a little bit. Minerals and rocks are like all matter composed of minute building blocks called atoms. The smallest particles that cannot be chemically split. Atoms in turn contain even smaller particles, protons and neutrons located in a central nucleus that is surrounded by electrons. Most of the atoms in the universe, except hydrogen and helium, were created inside massive stars by nuclear fusion and release into interstellar space during hot, fiery supernova explosions. As this ejected material cooled, the newly formed nuclei attracted electrons to complete their atomic structure. At the temperatures found in the Earth's surface, all three atoms, those not bonded to other atoms, have a full complement of electrons, one for each proton in the nucleus. The end of the second eon of cosmic time is culminated by the formation of our planet about 4.6 billion years ago. At this stage, the elements elements that make the Earth combine and we enter the first era of the Precambrian Eon. The Hadean period, named after Hades, the Greek god of hell, lasted approximately 600 million years and was followed by the Archean and the Proterozoic eras that culminated in the Phanerozoic, following the onset of life on Earth during the Precambrian, as depicted from the first fossilized vestiges of life in the form of microscopic microorganisms encountered in the rock record. The Precambrian accounts for more than 88% of the total total geological time. Thus, prior to any sign of life on Earth, at least as documented in the rock record until today, following the birth of Earth, an astonishing amount of time passed, where the right conditions for life were just getting ready. Life on Earth was possible as a unique set of conditions in our planet combined to result in the origin of life. This postulate is also known as the Goldilocks theory, where serendipitously, the set of conditions like the location of our planet to the sun, the amount of radiation, the temperature, and the existence of an atmosphere, allowing substances like water to exist, facilitated life on Earth. A unique set of conditions only met by a small proportion of planets, like ours. An alternative theory to the Goldilocks theory is called panspermia. The theory of panspermia postulates that the elements to create life came from outside our planet. This could have traveled in asteroids and meteorites to find in the Earth the perfect conditions to begin life as we know it. All the components, that is, the elements and molecules that constitute the building blocks of life, are everywhere in the universe. It's about how they combine to create what we call life. Today we conceive the Earth as being one entity interconnected to a much larger ecosystem of different parts that interact and are affected by what happens in our planetary surroundings. A good example is the fact that we are part of a cosmic ecosystem that can be affected by one or multiple parts. In this context, we are subject to changes in the solar radiation due to solar bursts, comets, and meteorite impacts that can influence the path of evolution and atmospheric systems on Earth despite being far away or coming from unknown areas of space. No wonder why our ancestors were so aware of the skies and how cycles on the celestial canopy can mark seasons or mark events that will exert any effect on their life. From prehistory, our our curiosity inspired the study of the universe. As humanity, it reminds me of something that a gentleman that I still admire very much said. Our passion for learning is our tool for survival. This video deals primarily with the formation of the universe and how our planet came to be what it is today. While preparing it, I could not stop wondering how it means the distances and time spans we are dealing with when we talk about the universe's origin and its evolution. Similarly, when we are dealing with planet Earth's formation, it is mind-boggling the astonishing astonishing amount of time spanning between the formation of our planet and the apparition of human as a species. 
On the one hand, that is an incredible amount of time. However, on the flip side, the size of the atoms, for example, that make up all the matter is also incredibly small. It is minuscule, quite difficult to wrap our heads around both the astoundingly large and small scales we are dealing with when we talk about matter and the universe. Add to that the fact that almost all the space between the fundamental particles that make the atoms and the celestial bodies like the planets, the stars and galaxies is empty. It is amazing how old what we call the universe it is in harmony and at the same time interactive in a perfect equilibrium and governed by the fundamental rules of nature, like the electromagnetic force and the gravitational force among others. We tend to forget the miracle that brought us here and the unique set of conditions that allow the formation of our planet. We we tend to take for granted unique marbles like our sun, our position in the solar system, the composition of our planet, its atmosphere, its minerals, the origin of life and our own very existence as a species. I could not stop a relentless feeling of gratitude for all these events that allowed us to be here and for the existence of our planet. In conjunction with the feeling that we inhabit a special place in the universe comes the evocation of an event that took place in 1990 during the space mission that launched the Voyager 1 a space probe. From a distance of approximately 6 billion kilometers, that is nearly 3.7 billion miles away, the Voyager 1 captured a remarkable image of Earth. Against the vast expanse of space, our planet appeared as a tiny speck, a pale blue dot. A remarkable image that continues to humble humanity and was made famous by Carl Sagan. I will leave the link to the description to the video with the fragment of Carl Sagan's reflection published in 1994's book titled The Pale Blue Dot, and a scene in 2014 Cosmos, a space-time odyssey. The pale blue dot, our planet, appears as a tiny speck amidst the dark to give us a salient reminder of humanity's place in the cosmos. It goes like this. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. Visit? Yes. Settle? Not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. Amazing. What a science communicator was Carl Sagan. We still remember him. So as he reminded us, for the moment, we are stuck here in our planet. But that is damn cool. Well, thank you for watching up to this point. I hope this video contributes to increasing your admiration and amazement towards our universe and our planet. Please let me know in the comment box which one you think is the most beautiful thing about our universe and why. Is it perhaps its grandiose scale or any celestial body or the stars, perhaps the comets? For me, well, I don't need to go that far outside nor think about the vast span of time to find my favorite thing about our universe or the night sky because it's all here. What I like the most is the seasons of our planet and the yearly dance of the earth around the sun. And in the sky, well, I also love the northern lights. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will see you in our next video. Ciao.